My name's Arshil Ahi. Hope you're well. It's Sunday, the 3rd of Ju uh, July 2016. It's 8 p.m. Uh, and tonight we've got a very special, almost like a short notice webinar. Uh, the reason being is that over the last, uh, just over the last week, I've been inundated with emails, phone calls from property investors all over the UK, as well as uh, international investors talking about U the UK property market, uh, Brexit. And for those that may have had their head in the sand and may not know what Brexit is, it's when the uh, uh, when the UK decided to leave the EU and so the question that everyone's been asking me is like I've got one investor and he actually called me from Tobago and he goes oh she goes I'm currently in Tobago I've been over here whilst um, all this has been going on he goes well what does this mean for us and it's the same question that I've pretty much been answering all week um, and so I decided well you know when I when I looked at it when I looked at the pros and cons of Brexit I thought okay there's potentially a lot more pros than there are cons, and tonight we're going to go through them. And so we're going to be talking about how to create a recession-proof property strategy. Online, I've got a very good friend of mine, <coughs> a business partner, to the name of Neil Ward. Neil, are you online? Hi, Ash. Yep, I'm here. Can hear you loud and clear. Okay, brilliant. And that's a great point, actually. One thing that we always do at the start of the webinar, if you wouldn't mind just saying hello, um, just letting us know that you can hear us nice and loudly and clearly, that would be great. Okay, so moving on. Um, so, hi Kay, right. So, moving on. Just a bit of a background about who I am and what I do. Uh, there's myself and my brother, uh, Akilahi, who's also my business partner. Uh, together with landlords and letting agents. Been letting the property since 1973. Uh, technically, speaking that's not correct because I wasn't born until 1980. Uh, we've currently got well in excess of 500 tenants which the majority of are on benefits uh, which is a tenant of our choice believe it or not. We've got 100% rent collection record with a very high 98% occupancy rate. Uh, for those that don't know we've never heard of a magazine called YPN. It, uh, it stands for Your Property Network and I was quite privileged to be asked in I think it's 2012-2013 to be asked to be write, uh, to write an article for it, uh, and I've been doing so every month for the last nearly you know, three years. Uh, and every month I write about something completely different. So some sometimes it could be a bit of a rant. Sometimes it's more on a specific topic, like as is the one that you see on screen. And this is one that I spoke about called rent, rent, and I was talking about is it worth a hype. Uh, we looked at a few properties and we saw that some properties worked, some properties didn't. And if you're not already a member or subscriber of YPN, I sincerely suggest that you do so, just purely because it's written by property investors for property investors. And it shows you the highs and lows of being in property investment, but more importantly, how some of the property investors are actually very strategic in their approach to property. And it gives you a completely new outlook, if I'm honest. So something to consider. So that's enough about me. So Neil, a little bit about you before we start moving on. Ash, that was the fastest introduction I think you've ever done in your life. You you normally talk fast, but that was about five times the speed. <laughs> so so that was a that was a quick one. Well, we've got, we've got um, a lot of content to get through tonight. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, we have got a lot to talk on actually. So my name is Neil McCoy Ward. I'm an entrepreneur based in Coventry in the West Midlands, UK, and I am the owner and director of the Forward Thinking Group, which a lot of the companies are not property related, so we, we won't go into that now, but a lot of them are. Um, and I, I do specialize in property investment, rent to rent, and deal sourcing. They they I'd say they're my three main strategies within the property field. And I also work as a professional speaker. So Ash had his um, large event this weekend just gone, and uh, I came in and, and gave a speech there on on negotiations, which is also what I talk on, is uh, as a marketing consultant and a, and a sales trainer. So I've done a lot of speaking on on those topics. But this evening we're going to really be focusing on the the Brexit, what it means for UK investors, and how you can benefit from it because it doesn't matter which way it went Ash and I had a strategy 
of what we were going to do. So if it was a, a stay in, we had a strategy. If it was a leave, we had a strategy. So um, we're going to talk through you know, what we came up with um, this evening. So let's go to the next, next slide, Ash. Okay, we so always... I'll, let you, I'll let you go. Okay, great, yeah. We always want to, before we start a webinar, just explain our commitment to, to everybody that, that either trains with us, educates with us, or, or listens in on the webinars, which are all training webinars. And the commitment really is, is happiness through education. And there's a lot of things that people uh, want in terms of finance, uh, you know, they, they want money, they want all these other things, um, but really, from our experience and the people that have uh, worked with us, um, so whether that's partners, business people, uh, investors, people who come on training, it really whittles down to four things that everybody wants, and that's what we help you to achieve through property. Uh, the first one is, is health, because it is difficult to uh, be in perfect health, in, in great health, when you're in a 95 job, like Ash and I were in at one point, um, not having that time to dedicate to yourself, to your health, and over time it does deteriorate. So this is one of the main key things that, that, that you get back when you, you actually work in property and get that, um, I'm not going to use the word passive income because you do have to do some work for it, but um, depending on your level, it gets more and more passive. One of my property companies I spend an hour or two a week on. Um, so, so it really is possible. <clears throat> the second thing is is travel, adventure, um, more cultural experiences. This is also possible through property. Number three is more time because when you don't have time, you, you just get so stressed that you can't achieve the things that you want to do. And you'll find as well through being in property, you just get so much more time back to be able to do the things you want in life. And, and lastly, uh, I don't think anyone can argue with this, is, is good relationships. Family, um, whether that's um, you, know, you and a partner, children, uh, parents, having that, um, having that income there that allows you to you know, really spend time with your family, build those relationships, do what you want. And those are the four things that Ash and I are committed to. So let's, um, let's go on to the next slide, Ash. So now we're going to get straight into the point of, uh, well, in actual fact, before we go to that, Neil's told you a little bit about our commitment to you. Now, what I'd like to do is, if possible, for all the people online, what is it that property means to you? Why is it that you're here? What's your why? If you wouldn't mind, in the box, if you wouldn't mind just telling us a little bit about, you know, what would you like to do with all this newfound time that you're about to achieve? And with all this new, uh, newly found knowledge, what would you do with it, and how would you make it work to benefit all the people around you? What should do that? What I'll do is I'll give you a brief introduction as to the Brexit and seeing how we can start moving this forward so that you can create a recession-proof property strategy, or sorry, a property business by using property strategies. So. Uh, our lovely government decided to uh, decided to put the UK to the test, and they said, "Well, you know, you, you've got, uh, we're going to create a referendum whether we either stay with the EU, whether you think it's a benefit to us, or whether we decide to leave." And uh, admittedly, they put it out there as pretty much as a bit of a bluff, because they never ever imagined for the UK to vote leave. Now, for, for those that we've got online, who actually voted in and who voted out? Because that'd be interesting to see who, who decided that um, we were going to go out. Okay, so a couple of people said out, and it's interesting because you might have asked why you decided to stay out if you did stay out, if you did say out. Because um, did, did we think of the long-term effects of being out? Because what does it mean all round for what does it mean all round for property? But before we go into property, we need to start thinking about what does it mean all round for the UK as an economy? Because naturally, what we saw straight away 
and what they start, what the um, politicians said from day one is that if we go out, we're going to fall straight into recession. Now that's quite, you know, that's quite a hard hitting fact or quite a hard hitting opinion, should I say, from the politicians to put down. And uh, it was the economists that said that we were going to go to recession. As a result of as a result of the uh, us going into recession, it would mean that the pound would fall, which means that now our imports would become a lot more expensive, leading to prices rising on the high street. Because if it's costing them more to buy stock in, they have to pass that cost back onto the consumer. Now the big one, and this is one that we're going to find a massive benefit to property investors, is that. As the pound becomes weak against other currencies, and yes, it did plummet, and yes, it did make a bit of a gain, but it's still weaker than what it started at. That for holidaymakers, the pound will now buy us fewer euros or dollars against the Brexit vote. The cost of accommodation will rise, and ultimately, your, spend, your spending money won't go as far as it did last week or the week before. More important, it just means that all in all, your vacation will become a lot more expensive than what it did as if we were in the euro. But the falling pound is also good news for exporters because it means that their products become cheaper for foreign customers to buy and thus makes us more competitive as a nation to purchase from. Now, just for argument's sake, do you, uh, sorry, do you all understand that? That's pretty much straight, straight away. So serious coming she goes, I voted out because we wanted to cut out the middleman. Long term, we'll have more say on our trade agreements, laws, etc. And I completely agree with that. Uh, but we, we have to look at the, the big picture. Is that, that we buy a hell of a lot off the EU, and we buy, and I, you know, I'm all for homegrown. Uh, I'm all for buying. From, people, uh, from companies in the UK and keeping trade within the UK. Now that's, that's a great benefit for the UK, but we've also got to consider that we can't manufacture everything within the UK. So technically speaking, we then have to buy abroad and we have to have a look at what are we buying abroad and what are we making uh, in the UK. And we buy a hell of a lot more from abroad than we do make in the UK or have grown products. So hopefully over time that will change, but immediately it means that everything that we now buy as a result of the pound weakening, everything becomes a lot more expensive, which naturally is going to put a massive pressure on the economy. Because remember, as the pound weakens, as things become more expensive for us to purchase, it means that the cost of living is going to increase because our wages wouldn't have gone up, but yet our expenses would have. Now, for argument's sake, I'm not sure about you guys, but uh, it can only mean one thing. If our, if our outgoings are now exceeding our incomings, that can only put the UK in a bit of a negative position, because we'll find that, and you will find that repossessions start to increase. So, moving on, we saw that the pound had uh, plummeted to its lowest level in more than 30 years against following the UK's vote to leave the EU. It has made small gains, uh, but again, the outlook uh, looks grim. Uh, well, but that's my opinion. But despite, in, uh, despite the markets panting off the bottom, I don't think that there's going to be a huge amount to cheer for and uh, to rally around the morning quickly after it halted. We saw, as a result of the uh, of the result of Brexit, we saw a number of key leaders decided that they no longer wanted to they no longer wanted to lead the UK going forward, and that's quite surprising, really, because the people who were the ones that were forcing the referendum were the ones that have left quickly. So David Cameron, Boris Johnson, these guys were the ones, well, technically speaking, David Cameron, although he was for the referendum, he never once thought that 
we were ever going to vote out. He always thought that we were a nation that would back the Prime Minister and stay that we're in. So it's a, it's a tough one because the PM abandoning it uh, as a result of leaving the EU. You know what I mean? It's that we've abandoned free movement of people and we can't retain access to the single markets. We can't have, and the EU specifically said, you're either in or you're out. There is no middle ground. So we've gone back and said, can we have free movement of people? They've said no, which kind of leaves us in a predicament now because these people that come in and, in and out of the UK, they were providing us with, an, uh, with business and bringing in revenue to the economy, which we may now lose. Now, what does it mean for property? Now, there's good and bad, because the bad side is that naturally property prices will fall, because confidence will uh, confidence will decrease. But on the good side, as the pound side, as the pound continues to weaken. It means that it makes our property look a lot more attractive to foreign investors. So it saw that there was a flood of new investors on the market. So there was a lot of American investors that came in looking to purchase properties, but predominantly that would have been in the major cities like your London, Manchester, and your Birmingham. But what does it mean for all the other smaller towns across the country? It means that now these uh, these prices are going to start to plummet. But what can we do? It's going to start pushing properties into negative equity. And we're going to go back into the same cycle that we did pretty much just over 10 years ago. Yes, London may stabilise, uh, as whereas before it was shooting off the scale. Um, but for the rest of the UK, where does it leave us? It's going to take a dip. And for those that have purchased, have purchased property recently, probably bought at the height of the market, they're going to now be back in a position where uh, banks were in 2006, 2007, where they were held with a loan book of negative equity. So does that, does that make sense? Uh, is there anything else that you'd like to add to that? Because there's, there's a well, there's well, when I looked at it, there's more there's more cons than there are uh, pros for st staying staying out of the U uh, UK. No, sorry, st staying out of the EU. So whilst we wait for some of you guys to uh, uh, start commenting on that, I'm now going to pass you back over to Neil, who's going to be talking about uh, the strategy now that you can utilise, which is going to generate cash flow as opposed to capital growth. So Neil, before we, over um, to you. Yeah, before we go on to that, if you just go back, Ash, um, <clears throat> just to add a couple of uh, a couple of bits, because that you know it was quite doom and gloom a little bit there before we sort of go into the more positive stuff. But um, you know, I have I have different takes on on the Brexit. I'm not going to go into the the politics of it, but I am going to talk on on it from the business side because I know there's a couple of business people online. Um, but what I've noticed, <clears throat> especially in the last week, um, which I know, Ash, we were talking about earlier, is that there's a lot of first-time buyers. It tends to be the first-time buyers at the moment, which are, I don't know if they're doing it to test the market or if they're just doing it to, to mess around or what, but a lot of them are really um, putting in silly offers. I've noticed a lot of silly offers coming in or you know, properties that are on the books that are for sale at the moment. Um, the offers are coming down. Oh, actually, because of you know, I'm worried the price is going to drop. I'm, I'm lowering my offer. So I have seen a lot of that. Um, but at the same time, I've seen a lot of foreign investment. So um, taking calls from uh, Middle East, Saudi Arabia, Oman, Dubai, and um, these sort of countries, as well as China, who are and they're very keen to invest in the UK at the moment, particularly in London because you've got this very weak pound, um, which for them is very attractive because they get, they're they able to buy much um, larger or, or better properties for the same amount of money um, from a week ago. So for foreign investment, it's quite, it's, it's quite key at the moment, whereas the UK investors, a lot of them that I've spoken to, are now saying that they really want to just hold off 
from actually making any purchases at the moment because they don't really know what's going to happen. Um, no one knows. I mean, everyone's got their own prediction, but it's difficult. Like my prediction is I don't know. I have no idea what's going to happen in the property market. Will it will it go down? I, I don't know. Um, so it really is it, it really is a tricky one. Um, now the other the other thing, and this is a sort of benefit for what we're going to talk about next. You what you'll see is a lot of investors and landlords holding on to their property. So some people that uh, maybe a few weeks ago they put their property on the market expecting a high high um, figure for it. You might find those same landlords and investors now getting a little bit worried because they don't want to sell for less than their properties are worth, which is why some of you will have seen before um, on, on webinars recently I was I was selling a few of my properties um, and and I'm quite happy that I have them now and sold a lot of them at the peak because you just never know when things like this are gonna are gonna come up um, you've also got as well not, not to forget interest rates so if interest rates fall this means um, that mortgages um, may become easier to obtain I don't know but they may become easier to obtain um, but overall, it's, it's difficult to know what the pre uh, future is going to predict. But like I said, Ash and I actually talked about our strategies beforehand. What if we go in, uh, stay in? What if we go out? And there's one property strategy which we're going to talk about now, um, which is recession proof. So it doesn't matter what happens in the market, this strategy is uh, just bulletproof. You, you cannot go wrong with it. So, Ash, we go on to the next slide. And do you want to give the introduction on it? Yeah, so, okay, so the strategy I'm going to be talking about tonight is the rent to rent strategy. And for the, uh, just so that we know, uh, for the people that we've got online, would you mind just saying it? Uh, do you know much about the rent to rent strategy or what's your experience of it? Have you got any experience or have you got no experience or bags of experience? If you wouldn't mind telling us, that'd be great. So, what we'll be doing uh, in the meanwhile is we'll be talking about the basics of it. So everyone's on the same page so with rent to rent there's um, with rent to rent there's three people involved so there's a landlord who owns a the property there's hopefully going to be you who's going to be doing the rent to rent deal and then there's a third person who's going to be the tenant moving into the property who lives in the property and in simple terms it works as you approach the landlord with your proposition you do some work to enable a multi-let of the property you rent the property out by buy the room for a lot more than you pay the landlord, which gives you profit per calendar month. Now, the way that, uh, the reason why I like rent to rent is very simple because from a risk point of view, it is extremely risk averse. Because let's just imagine that you've got a standard single let property, and you were renting it out for eight hundred and fifty pounds a month. Now, when that property becomes vacant. Regardless, you're still going to pay the mortgage. You may still have to pay the council tax and you're going to pay any standing charges on the electricity or utility meters, which means that it's still costing you money. Now, let's just use this as an example. We've got a four bedroom house, on four bedrooms on the first floor, then you've got living room, bedroom, uh, sorry, living room, dining room, kitchen, and bathroom on the ground floor. Now, if you were to convert this into a HMO or a multi let, Potentially, you could turn that into a five-bedroom HMO, so I have four bedrooms on the first floor and one on the ground floor, because you don't necessarily need two reception rooms in a HMO. So that means that instead of generating £850 a month from a property, you're now generating £2,000 a month. Now, on a rent-to-rent -rent basis, the general consensus was the general, um, yeah, the general consensus is that if you're running it as a HMO, it will be an all-inclusive bills model. So that would mean that it would include council tax, water trade, electricity and gas, possibly including broadband, possibly including a cleaner, depending on what market that you're uh, renting to. And the average consumption for a five-bed HMO is approximately £350 a month. So if you're renting it out for £2,000 a month, now give the rent to the landlord. And the reason why I give the rent to the landlord is because you haven't purchased the property, you merely rented the property off the landlord. So after you've paid him his rent, after you've paid out the utility costs, you're left with a profit of £800 a month, which is approximately four times more than you were renting it as a single let. 
And the reason why so many people love this strategy is because it's such a low cost or low cost entry to uh, sorry, a low cost ex oh, I've lost the plot today. So it's a low cost strategy to implement. So there's no mortgage required because you're not purchasing the property, there's no solicitors required or mortgage surveyors. There's no down uh, there's no deposit required, very little capital required to get going. And it's it's a lot easier to generate cash flow from properties and it's very easy to grow into a business. And more importantly, because you're not purchasing the property and you're renting or managing the property for the landlord, you can actually determine the terms of the agreement. Now, when you buy a property, that's impossible because the mortgage company will say it's either our way or the highway. So with rent to rent, you can actually determine it. So, Neil, I'm going to pass it back over to yeah. you. Yeah, I was just about to say, I'll, I'll jump back on. Um, so our, what Ash was, was talking about there in terms of the, the actual setup of the property, he used a lot of um, abbreviations and terminology, so I'm just going to um, cover that. An HMO is a house of multiple occupancy. So um, there's two types of HMO. You have a licensed type and an unlicensed type. So it, the general consensus, and it changes from council to council depending on selective licensing, is that if you have um, two floors on a house and, and you, ha you can ha pretty much have as many rooms as you want, although once you go over a certain amount it will require planning permission. But when you go up to three floors on a house and, and you hit five bedrooms, so Three, five bedrooms over those three floors, it then becomes a licensable HMO, which is something different and outside the scope of this uh, webinar. But just to give you a, a you know an intro to what, what was being spoken about there, so what, what happens very simply is you take a house, just a single, uh, very simple house, and you convert one of the, the lounges or the dining room into a bedroom, so you would end up with four, five, however many bedrooms, um, so, so it is a lot more profitable than actually um, renting that house as a single let property. So that was the, the, the general consensus of it. Now if we look at the ROI, which stands for return on investment, if you were to spend £2,000 on that property, so you've approached a landlord, you've agreed that you're going to rent it from him as a single let price, and then you are going to rent out those rooms. 99% uh, of the time the landlord does not mind. He does not mind or she as long as they get the money that you've guaranteed to pay them every month. So if you were to then take that property and invest £2,000 into doing a very light refurbishment on it, um, painting the walls, giving it a nice clean, putting in some, some furniture, if you would put that £2,000 in, you spent that and you were making £600 every month in profit, over a year, 600 times 12 comes to £7,200. Now that would be your net profit, that's not gross. So after all deductions, your net profit would be £7,200 per year on one single property. So if you look at the math on that, £7,200 profit divided by your initial investment of £2,000, that gives you a return on investment of 360 percent. Now usually if I'm at a business meeting or some sort of meeting and I'm speaking with other investors and they're talking about a 50% a return on investment <laughs> and everyone's patting them on the back, oh well done, um, and I come out with, well actually I get 360%. Now look at me with daggers as it, or they'll say, they just will not believe it because it's completely outside of the scope of reality of what is possible. But you've seen for yourself through this example how Ash, myself, all of the students that we've trained do this day in and day out and you can make a very serious amount of money through this strategy um, and, it's, and it's very, very risk, um, low risk and much, much, much lower, 10 times lower than actually owning that property because look what's happened at the moment, property prices might go down. Now in the long run we all know that's not a problem because property always goes up over the long run. 
But if you're doing property for a short-term strategy, then that right now may not be a good situation, depending on how it pans out. But with this rent-to-rent -rent strategy, it doesn't matter if property prices go up, if they go down, if they stay static. You still make the same amount of money every single month. Next slide, Ash. So every contract that I do is a minimum of three years with a landlord. For Ash, his is seven years. So there's quite a big difference between the, my strategy and Ash's strategy. Very different rent-to-rent uh, -rent models, and yet they're both very effective. If you were to look at that return on investment over three years, so you know you haven't put any more in, you've still put that initial two thousand in. So over a thousand percent return. You control the asset, and you know if you compare this to what most investors do. So I speak to people every single day who invest in fifty thousand, a hundred thousand pounds or more on deposits for houses, and their return on investment per year is usually anywhere from 5 to 12 percent. Okay, some people may get 15 percent if they're doing um, strategies such as HMOs, House of Multiple Occupancy, but in general most people that I speak to are getting around about 8 percent. That tends to be the average for the property industry. So compare that to a thousand percent with very little risk you don't need to put mortgages down. If you've got bad credit, you can still do the strategy and you can actually systemize this as a business, only spending very little time doing this. Um, it's, it's just, it's a no brainer really as a property strategy. Next slide, Ash. And here's the, uh, the other good thing about it. If you look at the businesses that are the most successful right now, and we've not included the biggest one on here, which is Google. What do you notice about these businesses versus other businesses from the last hundred years? What do all of these have in common? If you just type in the comments box, what do you notice they've all got in common? And ask if you just read out what people are typing, because I can't see that. Okay, so Kay says that they're all online. Interesting. Good answer. Yeah, anything else? Yeah. Just still waiting for a couple to come through. A couple of people are typing. It's difficult. It's a tricky one. Yeah. yeah okay, so Joan's put user, uh, Peter's put user generated. Joan has put no products offered. There we go. That's the, yeah, that's put, the answer. But yeah, it's all, all, go ahead, Ash. And then Sarah's put no assets. Yeah, every single one of those answers was correct. Absolutely spot on. If you look at the businesses that are, I mean, take Woolworths that, that you know we lost in the last recession. What was the problem with Woolworths? I mean, I'm a business person myself, I'm a business consultant, so I see things before they happen anyway. It's my job to be able to forecast things. Now, now what did you notice about a lot of these business? Um, look at British home stores at the moment. Why are they having difficulties? When if you look at British home stores versus Marks and Spencer, what did Marks and Spencer's do a little while back? They diversified. They said, okay, our age group of customers is getting older and some of them are no longer with us who are spending the money. So what they did was they diversified and they went after a younger age group. Now, British home stores, in my opinion, haven't done that, and that's why they're struggling right now. Now, if you look at these businesses on, online here on, on the screen, TripAdvisor, they do not own any physical asset, just eat. Again, all they do is it's an online platform for restaurants to be on, and, and then users actually go on their phone and they order the food, and it's delivered. So just eat, don't have to do anything except to maintain the service and the platform. YouTube, they don't own um, any of that, they, you know, that content is not created by them. They just, again, own the servers and, and the like. Facebook, exactly the same. Booking.com, same. Rightmove, the same. Uber, exactly the same. These are the boom companies right now. And if we, we can re relate one to, to what we do, spareroom.co.uk, 
which is, in my opinion, the best place to find tenants, professional tenants and worker tenants in the UK right now. There is no better platform than spareroom.co.uk. Again, they do not own any of the houses or any of the rooms. They just facilitate business people like myself who have rent to rent properties. And they allow me to find tenants and they take a cut through advertising because um, I actually do spend a lot of money every month on advertising on that platform as well as premium listings and the like. So they're making money and I'm getting the service. Now, a lot of, now the reason I'm saying this is because a lot of people say, why would a landlord just give, give you uh, their house? Why would they do that when they can make money? It's the same thing as I've just covered there. Why would I pay spare room hundreds of pounds every month in advertising and, and premium listings? Why would I do that when I could go out and do it myself? Because I don't want to. It's too much effort and you know, it's, look at these landlords. They, they're happy to accept a little bit of a lower figure knowing that they don't have to do any work they don't have to worry about damages to the property. They don't lose money if there's voids. There's there's no risk for them. So this is you know so powerful to be able to predict where we're going in the future with business with property. Next slide, Ash. Now Ash and I actually have a training company. As I mentioned at the beginning, Ash ran a big event this weekend. It was actually the biggest event I've seen. Um, uh, I've seen in a long time and it was it was it was amazing the amount of people that came who were property professionals that wanted to learn more and you know the wealth within that room was was into the tens of millions of pounds that people own property um, and every, if they're learning you've got to ask the question if these people who are millionaires property millionaires are learning every all the time um, through mastermind groups through networking through events then um, why why is you know why are more people not doing that? Why are people who are not property millionaires that want to get into property not doing that? That's the big question. And this is our training company. We always sell out of our courses and our speeches, especially now that we've reduced the numbers massively and and tailored it more. And we actually have a, a lot of support as well. If you go to the next slide, Ash, I just mentioned the community group that we have. So we actually have a, a community support group. So this is a secret Facebook um, page. Now, anyone that does any training with us, no matter how small, you will get access to this group. Now, uh, the last time I checked this, we had 186 members on there. Now, these are these are serious property people. They're not, you know, people that are messing around. This is serious people who are doing a lot of um, a lot of good stuff, especially within rent to rent and the deal sourcing marketplace which are both Brexit recession proof uh, strategies where you can make a lot of money and again you don't have to own anything. Rent to rent business, you don't have to own the properties. Deal sourcing business, you don't have to own any of the properties. Again, you are using your knowledge that Ash and I give to you in order to make money. It's the same as a consultant like myself. When I go into a, a company, no matter how large, as a consultant, I don't have any any product. What I have is experience in my in my head that the business that, that's hired me does not have. And I also have that different angle to look at things. And it's the same thing for each of you. When you learn this strategy, you now have an insight that a lot of people don't have. Even as, at letting agents do not have this knowledge and insight, which is why they make a hundred pounds a month on a house and you make 600 to a thousand pounds per month on the exact same house that they would have had. It's it, it's powerful. Knowledge really is power. So let's go on to the next slide, Ash. Up to date, I mean, this is just an estimate, but we know we've we've um, trained people that have got at least now 200 rent to rent properties. This doesn't include portfolio owned properties. This is just rent to rent. And this doesn't include Arsh and, and, and my portfolio either, which is a lot of houses. This is just the students that we've, we've trained. Um, so even if, now just look at these calculations, even if the property only made a very small £500 per month, just one property, and you were to times that 
by the 200 properties, that means our students are making over £100,000 per month, £1.2 million per year, or £6 million over five years. Now, that is no small feat to be able to do that. Um, next slide, Ash. And just to share a, a personal story with you from what I did, when I first started learning about rent to rent, I really struggled. And I'll, I'll be honest, I really struggled because um, I did courses like a lot of people go off and do courses, and I just didn't get anywhere. And I thought, is it, is it me that's the, the problem here, or is it the training that I received? Because I noticed every course was the same, exact same training, and I wasn't getting anywhere. So what I did was, I said, look, Neil, you're a, you're a salesperson, you're a marketing expert, you should be able to figure this out. And as soon as I stopped doing what I've been taught, and I just did what I knew to be, to be right in terms of marketing and sales perspective, within my first year, I made 10,000, it was almost 11,000 pounds per calendar month profit. So it was that quarter million pounds, it, it was crazy. Um, so what happened was I was approached by a businessman who wanted to buy this from me first year and the offer I received was ridiculous to sell and he, he still calls me occasionally now to see if I want to sell the portfolio because the great thing about rent to rent is it is a business and again we show you how to turn it into a limited company and uh, once it's a limited company it's now sellable when it's in your own name it's not sellable in, in quite the same way and um, so, so the way that businesses are usually valued is, is very simple. It's usually two to four times annual profit. But again, this varies. It depends on the industry. The tech industry is completely different. But when it comes to bricks and mortar businesses, or in this case, um, not quite bricks and mortar businesses because you don't own them, um, but the business itself is bricks and mortar, it's usually two to four times. So on average, it's about four times. So if you were making um, you know these sort of figures you've now got a, a business valued at anywhere between quarter of a million and half a million pounds but the interesting thing is the offers aren't that the offers are a lot higher than that I mean they're over a million pounds usually the sort of offers you'll receive for a business like this because it is unique and it is growable it is scalable you can take a business like this and you can adopt this same model in any city you know, one of our students now has already really done well in one city and he's looking to go to another city. It's like, how much do you want to make a month? It's, it's, it's really, um, once you systemize it, you can set up this anywhere. It's, it's powerful strategy, it really is. Next slide, Ash. So here's the main question that people ask. How can I get involved in this myself? And quite simply, all you need to do is three things. It is, it is very simple once you understand how to do it. It's like anything. If I, um, I went to SpaceX recently in California, um, Elon Musk's uh, company, and to these guys who were giving me a tour, you know, it was, it was basics. It was rocket science, but it was basic to them because they were experts in it. But to me, I didn't have a clue about a lot of this stuff. I had no idea what they were talking about. But yet, if these guys who were extremely intelligent came and spent the day with me, who, uh, you know, as an entrepreneur, they wouldn't have understood half the things that I was saying. So it's all in perspective. So here's the first thing. Number one, you've got to educate yourself on how to do strategy effectively with someone who's already done it. That's the key thing. A lot of people try and figure this out themselves, and they spend years and they waste thousands of pounds trying to do it themselves. And they also ruin their chance of actually um, building an effective business in this because they go around the letting agents, they go around the estate agents, they go around all the tradesmen, and they, they annoy them. They don't have the experience, they don't know what they're talking about, and they, they blow out their chances. So this is why you've got to get it right from the beginning because otherwise it, it's difficult to build that back up. You know, I've got a few, I've got a few people who I train, and I've really... It's so much hard, harder than people who are fresh because I've got to keep advising them on how to go back out there and improve this reputation that they shattered at the start. And it doesn't matter what in industry you're in. You know, um, 
I should probably mention that I, I do professional speaking. Now, I've got a professional speaking coach. I've actually got three of them in different areas. And one of the things I learned was when I was speaking prior to that, I thought I was good. And I realized actually I wasn't that good until I started getting coaching. And then, and then from there, it, it just you skyrocket off in terms of your success. Now the second thing is, is research, and it's the same in, again, any business market. You have to research, and the research within, for this is quite, um, it's simple, but at the same time it's quite technical. Now, the reason I say that, we give you the exact system, so you know exactly, and we actually do it on the course. You don't go away and do it yourself. We actually do it in the room um, so that you 100% you have researched your area, you know it works. If it doesn't work, then we tweak it until we find a tenant group, property type, area that does work, until we find that gold mine area for you. So no one goes home without that. And the third thing is, is taking massive action. It's really, it's really that important. You've got to take massive action. And again, have that that follow-up support, because going on a course is great. You know, I, I, I go on courses myself, but if the person that goes on, that you, you learn from, isn't willing to mentor you afterwards, then there's a problem there, because the only way to really get stronger is to either receive mentorship or be part of a community. So that's why we created the community Facebook group that I, um, that I showed you a little while ago. Because yes, some people might say, okay, I can't afford to pay um, anything right now, so I'm just going to get the support on the group, which is great, because you know that's what it's all about. You've got to get that support ongoing. Now, I will say, everything in the course is designed very much like a franchise, so you actually get everything. We don't hold anything back. You get everything, and we don't take a franchise fee, and we don't take a cut each month. What I mean by that is a lot of people that were franchise owners came on the course, and they said, this is like getting a franchise, except I didn't have to pay fifty thousand pounds for it. I've got it all. Um, next slide, Ash. So here's the next question: Why don't more people do it? And if it's that easy, so why aren't people doing it all over the place? Well, here's the answer: A lot of people are doing it. You just don't know that they're doing it. And there's so much room for more people to do it. I don't know any areas that are saturated at the moment. I really don't. There might be pockets within a city that are saturated, but there are no cities that are saturated from people doing rent to rent. Look at some cities where they've got 50 letting agents. If you go to London, there's probably tens of thousands of letting agents. How is it they're all in business? Because there's so much business out there. You've just got to take your small chunk. And here's the thing. If you look at a typical letting agent, high street agent, they might have a hundred properties on the books. If you had a hundred, let's just say you had 10% of that. So if you had 10 properties and they were each making 500 pounds. How much are you making a month? 5,000 pounds. Is that enough for most people on the webinar to live comfortably? 5,000 pounds a month. I would say yes, the majority of people on this webinar could live very comfortably on £5,000 a month. So that's all you really need to do. Get that target of what you want to achieve. When I first started, I wanted to test the water. So I said, right, I'm going to take on five houses and that's that. And I took on those first five so quickly. So that's, um, I can't remember the exact time. It was very, very fast. It was weeks, not months. And I was making this money now, and I thought, right, great, I'm making all this money. And then what I did was I reinvested it back into more houses. So I only put a small pot in initially, and then I reinvested that pot back into more houses. Because of course, once that money's in, it's in. You know, you don't you don't pull that money back out. That's your investment in. And then you 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 live on the cash flow that you're getting every month, or you reinvest that cash flow. So my advice is always to reinvest that cash flow because the more you reinvest back into the houses, the more cash flow you build up. It's, it's, um, it's like the snowball effect. If you think of a snowball and you roll it down a hill, the bigger it gets, the more snow it collects. It's a powerful, powerful concept. So here's, um, here's why more people don't do it then. I don't have the finances for a training course. 
seriously, our training is one of the lowest cost trainings on the market. And the reason for that is because Ash and I are already successful business people. We don't do it because we want to make a ton of money. If we did, we wouldn't do the course at all. You know, I would be doing my consulting at my day rate, which is probably five times what I would make on a course like this anyway. Similar with what Ash does. So we don't do it for the money, and we don't think our courses are expensive. It pays for our time. And um, to get people like, like Ash and I to train you, um, you don't really see that very much in the industry. Most people who are training are not successful um, multi business owners, entrepreneurs. Now the second thing is um, people just aren't willing to invest in a training course. That's the other one that surprises me. People want all these results but they're not willing to invest a small amount of money which would be a tiny fraction versus the return that they would get. Um, but again, there's not, there's not a lot I can say on that. There's not a lot I can coach you on that because that is a mindset thing. It's, it's, it's within your own mindset if you think something's uh, unattainable for you, unachievable. There's not a lot I can, I can coach on that other than to just say, you know, if you think it's right for you, um, you know, you, you'll, you'll, find the, you'll find the finances to do it. Number three is the fear of the unknown or fear of failure. Um, again, it's, it's, it's a difficult one. Most of our students, as you'll see from some testimonials in a moment, have gone on to have massive success, huge success. But then, of course, I'm not going to sit here and say 100% success record um, because it's not true. Then you get a handful of people from every course who just will not do anything. They'll leave and they won't do anything and they'll expect results. And life doesn't work that way. You know, if you went to work tomorrow and you just sat there all day and didn't do anything, how could you expect to be paid? And it's the same in this business. You can't just expect to get lots of business and lots of money without doing the work. And number four is just not understanding how to do it, which is, which is why we train and, and, and teach this. So let's go to the next slide, Ash. So I'm also just going to tell you what you know, a lot of other trainers will not tell you. So this is why 80% of people fail at rent to rent from, from all the coaching I've done and all the training and all the people I've sat down with one on one. These are the main reasons. Number one, people are going to letting agent, letting agent, letting agent. And in my opinion, it's not the best way to do it. A, a lot of letting agents will not give you their properties. Some will, okay, I, I, I get that. But if you look at the contracts, they're not the right contract. Corporate agreements, um, um, ASTs, a short, short hold tenancy, these are not the way to do it. The way to do it is by using a management agreement. That's the importance of it. So I only go to direct a vendor. I don't do agents because I don't want to be paying fees to them either. I'd rather keep that money, let's say it was a thousand pounds, and reinvest that back into another property and grow quicker. Number two, you've got to understand sales and negotiations. It's absolutely essential. And you've got myself who, will, who teaches that on the second day. And it's all experiential. So it's accelerated learning. You get that. You become an, ex, an outstanding negotiator. You get the exact same training that corporates pay thousands of pounds a day for. You get that training. And then number three is focusing on your marketing. And I recommend only doing four strategies you don't need to do a thousand strategies like a lot of people teach. Next slide. <clears throat> so a lot of people ask me how I got into being an entrepreneur. And the truth is I've always been an entrepreneur. But there was one book that I read, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, by Robert Kiyosaki. And he said the secret to success in as being an entrepreneur, two things, sales and marketing. And that's really why I went into sales and went into marketing. And I highly recommend, if you don't know anything about sales or marketing, you at least pick up a book or you look into it in some way because it will dramatically change your, your business lifestyle. Okay, next slide, Ash, and we'll talk about the training now. So the next course that we're running is Saturday and Sunday, 16th and 17th of July. So that's this month. 
and we do still have a few spaces left. I'm not sure how many it is. I think it's four seats um, off the top of my head, um, but we'll have those stats in a moment. These are just a few of the things. I've, I've touched on them already. So identifying and dominating your gold mine area. How to get in front of the landlords, how to get those leads, how to get that business, and also getting the high-end finish in the house for a low-cost budget. You saw the photos of some of my houses. That cost me very, very little money, pounds. It wasn't thousands of pounds. It was very, very low cost. This is the important one. How to be legally compliant and avoid the pitfalls that most rent-to-rent -rent people who don't do the training fall into. And they get into a lot of trouble, serious, serious trouble. And I take these calls every day from rent-to-rent -rent people who have done different courses or even haven't done a course and they're in serious legal trouble. So that's why we show you how we do it, um, legally compliant, we've used solicitors, property solicitors, we've spent thousands of pounds on the legals so that you don't have to, you just get all these contracts. Then we're going to go into all the calculations, we're going to give you some calculators, spreadsheets, so you know how to do all the numbers, calculate the profit on each deal, because you know some of us are not good at math, that's just the fact of life. You, you cannot be good at everything. Um, so so we've, we've built these models for you so that if you're not good at numbers and math, this will all calculate it for you. So it really, really helps you. And I'm going to show you my model of how I did it. Got to 11,000 in the first year. So next slide, Ash. And we'll talk about the negotiations now. So on the second day, we're going to go all into negotiations. So buying patterns, the sales psychology, the, um, we'll talk about a lot of the models that either I developed or I, I learned from sales experts. Um, and I'm going to take you through the exact process, so it's a 12-step system, for taking that landlord from the first letter or the first phone call right through to a yes. And it is a scientific formula, it's not just made up stuff, it's, it's scientific, it's proven. You know, there's 10,000 salespeople using this system that I've developed. So you you know if there's that amount of people using it, um, it can't it can't be too far wrong. Let's just say that. The next key thing that I drill in over and over again: if you go out and you're negotiating for business and you're not doing very well, it's usually because you don't understand how to overcome objections. Now that is really my speciality, and especially when I got into rent to rent. I lost a lot of deals at the start because I didn't understand objection handling. I didn't know what sort of things the landlord would throw back at me. And of course when that happens and you just you're there on the spot, you don't know what to say a lot of the times. So we actually cover on day two all the objections that can possibly come out. And Ash even lets you come on stage and grill me and say whatever abuse you want to me. <laughs> and my job is to sit there calmly and overcome any objection, which so far I've been able to do on every course. So um, we'll go through all of that. And of course the benefit of that is that when you then go to the, your first meeting, it doesn't matter what is thrown at you, you know what to say. So really it's, and, and you go through the system and the landlord is now in that position where it really just comes down to one thing once you've covered everything, and that's just the money side of things. And if you've done your, your figures properly anyway, you're going to get that deal, you're going to get that business. You're going to do live interactions all day with each other, one-on-one. -on -one. Um, so don't worry, it's not going to be, you're not on stage doing this, it'll just be one-on-one -on -one with other people. And you're going to learn my exact 12-step sales model. So uh, next slide, Ash. Now the interesting thing, most of the people that come on the course, I say maybe 25 to 40%, they've already done um, a rent to rent course or they already have a couple of properties themselves. So why don't they, so, so why do they come on our course then? That's the interesting thing. And it's because we go through the exact formula um, of the rent to rent that we've done. We're not going to hold anything back and try and upsell. There, there isn't any of that involved because we actually haven't got a course after the rent to rent. The rent to rent course is whole and complete as it is. Uh, there is nothing after it, only the support really to get you um, further along quicker. Um, so, next slide, Ash. 
<laughs> yeah, great. Um, so my job really is to get you from a one in five conversion rating, which is about average for people who come and see me, to a four in five. And I'm pretty confident that I can do that. So that's my uh, that's my sort of commitment really to you. Next slide, Ash. You're also going to get all the um, mind mapping. So I'm a very visual person. I don't like to sit and write lots of things down. So I like to mind map. Because when I've got a mind map in front of me, I can just see things so clearly without going through back and forth through pages of a notebook. Now these mind maps are pretty powerful. So I'll talk firstly on the, the one on the right very quickly. That is furnishings within a property. Now these now each um, sort of trail here is a different room within the house. So if you were to go to the lounge, for example, that lounge then branches off and it shows you all the furniture that I recommend buying and putting in that lounge and where you can get it from and what sort of costs and things. <coughs> and the one on the left is all on your marketing. So marketing and the actual sourcing are slightly different, but this is how to market your business effectively. Next slide, Ash. Okay, this is your keys to, to success. So I'll let Ash just um, cover this slide um, because this is his, his um, baby really that he's built um, over many years. Okay, so the, uh, the, uh, the USB key to success is, uh, doc sorry, it's a USB which has got all the documents that you require to successfully run a portfolio of properties. So that will have spreadsheets on, so sales spreadsheets, schedules, rent statements, gas safety documents, uh, a number of documents or templates which will allow you to run a property portfolio successfully. So once you've got your first property up and running, you don't need to worry about management software, software or anything like that. You've got all the documents that you require there and then. So back over to you, Neil. Okay, great. So here's what's going to happen when you when you book on. You're going to get the rent to rent training. So one day's rent to rent training, and we're going to do an offer for you on on the costings. You're going to get the sales training. You're going to get the management agreement. So this is really what a lot of people um, book for. <clears throat> they want this management agreement because it costs us at least three thousand. I think it was a lot more than that to create this because we we put it through so many solicitors to sort of proofread it, check it, go through different scenarios. What if this happened? What if that happened? Do you get that management agreement, which is just so powerful? All the legal documents template letters that I created that you just send out to landlords, adverts that you put in the papers, um, you get the USB, you get buffet meal each day, you know, it's not just a sandwich and a bag of crisps, it's a you know, nice meal. You get membership for life to the Rent to Rent secret group online. You get a one-on-one -on -one call with me after the course and you get lifetime support, which is absolutely priceless. So yeah, you can see the value of all of that right away. Next slide, Ash. So here's the other thing. If you look at the cost of our course in comparison to other courses, you can see what people charge. 776, 617, 583 for one day. And it's usually other courses, you know, you turn up at nine or ten, you finish at four or five. I'll be upfront and honest right away and say, Ash and I, we work until the training's done. So we start at 9 a.m. on the dot both days, and we we do not leave that room until everyone has got it. You know, that, till that training is done, and that's why we've reduced the numbers now. We don't do 75 in a room, 50 streaming online. We only take 20 people on every course, and we only run, you know, two, three of these courses a year now. We don't do it very often. So you can see we we only charge nine nine five for two days. That's that's all we charge. It's it works out you know half the cost of other courses, and that's not all. We're gonna we're, we're gonna keep going on this. Next slide, Ash. So if you look at again going back to ROI, what could you expect to get from that investment? Well, 
if you look at what we're talking about in terms of cash flow, that's only six weeks of cash flow. So for a course, you get that back from one house, six weeks of cash flow. If you don't think that's a good return on investment, I, I don't know what is. Because you know I'm in business and that for me is a fantastic return. But imagine if you had 10 or 20 houses and you know you times that 650 cash flow by 10. That's 78,000 pounds profit per year. That's a lot of money. Ash, do you want to go on to the next slide and talk about you know the testimonials and some of the students that we've helped? Okay, so basically all the people that you see on, on site now or online now, all people who have been on the workshops now, for argument's sake, the, the one person that I do want to bring to your attention is the lady in the top left hand corner, uh, Deborah Lewis. So if you have a look at it, so she says that she attended the, uh, the workshop and she goes, here, yeah, my first deal was a 36 bed HMO already tenanted with full management. I have seven properties now and growing. It's important for me to build a relationship di and go direct to vendor. So that I've tried to deal with high street agents, but they're not educated. And these strategies were very negative. So she's now employed in PA and also has a property manager who uh, started in March, April last year. And she had a lot of fun with the strategy. So 36 bed HMO, if you've got 36 bed HMO, just imagine the kind of cash flow that's generating. She can retire off that one deal alone. Then we've got other people who've been on the workshop. So we've got Susie Bates, who's uh, quite well known on the property circuit because she runs a very successful leaf litting company. We've got Sally, we've got Adam, we've got Justin. Now, Leroy, Sean, uh, Sean's quite a large property developer now. He's doing quite well in the property development game. We've got Nick Coggins, who's doing really well in the rent to rent business. Uh, and Leroy Robertson has actually done really well. Uh, Leroy is actually all, also on a mentorship with us, and, he, and I'm tracking his progress, and he's doing extremely well. And here's other guys who've got. Um, so, bottom right hand side, we've got Rory O'Mara. Now, Rory O'Mara, if you know uh, anyone in the property finance industry, he's really big into bridging, and he's done our workshop, and he actually. Uh, speaks to all these students about our workshop as well. We've got a number of people there. So we've, uh, excuse me if I don't remember all the names, so we've got Ivana in the top right hand corner, we've got Diane in the bottom left hand corner, and I can't remember their names, but they're from, uh, I think they're from Bournemouth, and they're doing really well as well. We've got a uh, person in the top right hand corner, this person called JC. Now JC is he came on the call in February 2015, and up to now, he's got 23 rent-to-rent -rent properties. And believe it or not, he's extended it where it's not just in the UK. He's actually taken on a few condos in, uh, was it Bangkok or Taiwan? Or, oh, sorry, Thailand. So he's doing really well. Uh, and all these people there, so we've got Deborah, who's in the far right of corner, who's just on the 36 bed HMO. So there's a number of people who have already given us uh, testimonials as a result of coming on this workshop who have actually we've turned around their fortune and who have now gone off to make uh, decent money in property. So Neil, back over to you. Yeah, okay, that's great. Thanks, Ash. So yeah, you can see, you can see from the screen here, you know, in the left-hand picture, that was BBC. Um, was it BBC or Channel 4, Ash? I think it was Channel 4, wasn't it, that came and... Um, Channel 4, yeah. Yeah, Channel 4 came and filmed us, you know, doing the event and stuff. That was a big one. We had a lot of people on that event. If you go to the next slide, you know, you can see on the next slide here, and this is the bonus day that we included with negotiations. I mean, you can see it's a double screen event. It was absolutely, it was a huge event. But we, like I said, we're not doing that anymore because what we want to do is we want to work more closely with people. So we're only offering 20 seats for each course now. We're really bringing down the numbers so that we can increase that value from a more personal one-on-one -on -one basis. Um, because I think a lot of the feedback was it was great. You know, the course is amazing, but we're so far away from you, and you know, there's so many people that want to talk to you at the breaks that we couldn't really get that personal service. So that's why we've gone down now to just 20 seats. So it is a personal service. We all sit on the same table to eat 
um, lunch. You know, we it, it is just I prefer it myself actually. So next slide. I think we've got the the stats of what we've got left. Um, yeah. So okay, so we've got six seats left, not four seats. And um, we've got six seats left for this next course, um, which is um, we'll bring the dates up again in a second. And it's going to be 16th to 17th of July at the Drawries Inn in Birmingham. So the reason that we use the Drawries Inn in Birmingham is because it's right next to Birmingham New Street Station. We used to do events, you know, further north. Then we did them in London, and we actually took a loss in London because it was just the hotel costs were just astronomical and all the expenses and things. Um, because again, we're not charging huge sums of money. So now we do it in Birmingham New Street. So the people that are in London, they get on the train at, at Euston, an hour and 15, an hour and 20 minutes, and they're in, in Birmingham New Street. So it works for everybody. And even the people in the north, they can get the train down a couple of hours, um, and you're in the central location, Birmingham New Street. Hotel rooms are very inexpensive. There's restaurants everywhere. It's a really um, great location. So let's go on to the next slide and just talk about the... Um, special webinar offer that we've got then. So the course is not £1,990, um, which is a normal price. We're actually doing it, as I mentioned, for £995 for webinar special, and you get all the rest of the stuff included. So all of that is included in the price. So that's all the contracts, all the templates, all the letters, the follow-up, the, the, you know, everything is included in that price. And not just that, we're going to do a really special deal now. Next slide, Ash. So this is just, as I said, we've got six seats available. If you're serious about doing rent to rent as a strategy, so again, we're not interested in people who are just going to turn up and you know mess around or not really interested. If you're really serious, we're going to let you bring a guest or a business partner free of charge. You don't even have to pay their day rate um, costs, you know, for meals and seats and all of that. You can you can bring someone completely for free. So that can be a, a spouse, um, a partner, a business partner, a son, a daughter, whoever you want to bring. Um, as long as they take it seriously as well, um, you can you can bring a guest for free. So that's really the offer that we're we're making tonight. Next slide, Ash. And again, if you if you do book, you will get the one-on-one -on -one session with myself after the course. So you can use that for whatever you want. A lot of, um, you know, I, I prefer if you use it for the rent to rent. But I've I've had all sorts of things calls come through over the years. So um, that's that's what you'll get as well. Uh, next slide. Okay, so we don't recommend this option. But if you do want to do one day or the other, I mean, it's got to fit within the numbers that we've got. We can't have too many on one day, too little on the next day. If you want to do just one day, we will allow that at 595. So we'll even discount the day from 995 to 595. And you can bring a guest um, still on that day. Or sometimes we get a lot of business people who want to come on a negotiations day. Again, that's absolutely fine. As long as the numbers work, we'll will allow that. Um, next slide, Ash. Okay, just before we go to the next slide, so, so uh, someone's just bought, how do we book on? So if you look at the top where it says www.arshlarvey.com forward slash r2rmc, that's all you're going to do. Type that, into your, uh, type that into your browser and it will take you to the payment page. Now, Fleur has asked, she goes, I can't do the July dates as I'm recovering. Uh, from some form of surgery, she goes, are there any other dates planned? The one thing that you could do, Fleur, is that you could take advantage of the opportunity of the, the discount, and you could actually, we actually live stream the event as well. So just as you're watching this webinar, you actually get to see us live on stage and actually going through all the uh, content, and you also get all the contracts and all the paperwork prior to the event via email. So if that's an option for you, by all means, yes, uh, we'd love to have you online. And if you can't, then we will be running another event. I think, uh, Neil, is it around, I think it's around the October time. 
We haven't confirmed the date yet, but you can take advantage of the special offer tonight and we can put you forward into that event. Yeah, exactly. Um, I think probably looking at, at my calendars and Ash's schedule and things, we are looking around, I mean the earliest it will be is September, but we are probably looking around October time, beginning of October. Yeah. Um, okay. So in terms of payment then, I don't think we're taking um, American Express now. I think that's the only one that we're not taking. But you can either make one payment of 995 or three payments of 350 But the only thing is um, the course is starting um, very soon. So you will really need to make sure that all the payments are made before the start of the course. We, you know, we can't just have you come on the course having paid one payment. It's all got to have been paid um, beforehand. So usually when we do webinars, we give people plenty of time to you know, pay that money. Um, but if you are going to bring a guest or a business partner, or even if you find someone um, through a property networking event or a, a forum or something that wants to do it with you, we don't mind you splitting the cost with other people. I know it's a taboo thing in other courses where trainers won't allow that, um, but, but we will actually allow that because we're here to support you. So, you know, we think if you're willing to go and, you know, take that initiative and find someone else to come on the course with you, then we're going to support you for having that initiative and allow that. So it's not a problem at all. Um, I think if we go to the last slide then, Ash, I think just to finish, if you've got any questions, you want to give us a call. Um, you know, as long as it's to do with this rent to rent business and, and booking on the course, you can you can actually call us on our personal mobiles, which we'll give you in a moment. So I just want to um, leave the link up for a second because I think there's two seats left um, to book onto the course now. So if anybody is is wanting to to get on there and bring a partner, um, that's your this is your opportunity. And there's the link at the top, and there is my phone number if you want to make a note of that. And uh, then I'll give you Ash's phone number as well in a second. And there's Ash's phone number. So once you've got that down, we'll just go back to the, um, the, the booking link. OK. OK, so we've got a couple of questions here. Yeah, so great. Jason's coming and goes, quick question. If I do rent to rent, is there any way I can avoid paying a rent in advance or a deposit? A hundred percent. I've never once paid rent in advance or a deposit. Never. Um, I, w I would never do it. And it's very, it's very easy not to do it. Um, really simple strategies to avoid that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. So sorry. So Russ has got that. What's to take some phone numbers down, so I've left the numbers up there. Uh, and person from NC goes, "Ask you about what's your annual profit from property, from rent, rent, uh, rent, rent, or HMOs." That all my annual profit is derived around property. So whether that be rent to rent developments, uh, HMOs, uh, trading property. Last year I traded 140 properties. Uh, I've got. 32 rent for rent properties. Uh, then I've got a number of HMOs which are all in my portfolio, which makes up a portfolio of 650 tenants. So all my pro so it's very you know when, if the question is do we make a significant amount of money from trading? No, the majority of my income comes from property related activities. Yeah, so hopefully it's, that it's helps. Yeah, it's same. Probably less than one percent of my income is through is through property training of this type. If we're talking about corporate training, that's a different matter, and that's a substantial amount. But um, property training for for you know everyday people that want to get into this, no, we don't, we don't make a lot from it. Okay, have we got any questions relating to the? Okay, the so so was Okay, no, they're, they're quite a bunch today, Neil. Are there any questions with regards to Red Threads or anything to do that you want to, uh, that you want to ask whilst we're online? We've got a couple of minutes. Um, 
if there is anything burning, right, okay. So Russ has put thank you. Uh, no further questions. We haven't had any other further questions. Is there anything else you want to say on the strategy, Neil? Yeah, actually, I think um, I'm going to answer that question a little bit better about the deposit, just so I can actually contribute something to you on that. Um, because it is something that gets asked a lot, and I've noticed no one ever answers that question. So I thought, right, I'm actually going to answer that tonight. Here's the way that you don't pay a deposit or money up front. When a landlord says to me, I'd like you to pay me one month as a deposit, so let's say it's a thousand pounds, I would say, okay, um, can I just ask why you would want a deposit if I'm going to be spending, let's say, five thousand pounds renovating your property? Because surely the, the deposit is to stop any damage. Is that, is that, is that right? And they'll also usually stop and think about it and say, oh, right, yeah, actually, yeah, okay. So I say, well, I'm going to invest this £5,000, but if you would like, I don't mind, if you would like to do the renovation, <clears throat> and then I'm happy to pay a deposit. I just thought it would be easier for you if I would do, do, you know, do the renovation, put my own money in. But it's whatever you prefer. <laughs> So I'd, I'd usually come at, come at it with that sort of angle, because that is what a deposit is for. It's to stop. It's to stop that damage of their property that they're worried about. But if you're going to take their property on in a condition that isn't perfect anyway, and you're going to make it beautiful with spending very little money, but they don't know that, um, you know, the, the, there is no need for a deposit basically. So I hope that answers the question. Okay. So a couple of other questions just come through. Am I yeah. right in thinking that this only for rent to rent or HMO? I'm not sure what the question is getting. Um, I think I understand, Ash. Yeah. Um, yeah. So rent to rent, I, I think it, it works in in uh, more or less any property, but I would only recommend that you do it with a property that has three bedrooms or more, three bedrooms and two reception rooms, because that's really where you make the profit. You make the profit on the third um, bedroom, so that's why you want a fourth or fifth bedroom, and that, that way you're making more and more profit. So the more rooms that you have, the more profit you're making, basically. The only thing is I prefer to do smaller properties, so all of mine, apart from a few, have four bedrooms. So that's three bed, two reception, and I change one bedroom into a, uh, one reception into a bedroom. So I prefer four bedrooms because I just find that the tenants get along a lot better. As soon as you go to five or six, um, it's just my experience that people tend to sort of argue more and bathroom problems and lounge issues and too many people cooking in the kitchen and the like. Um, so, so yeah, it does work on any type of property, but that's just my recommendation. I always do it with smaller houses because if I'm making, let's say, £750 on, that, on a house like that, I'm happy. If I'm getting that as a net profit every month, I'm happy. You only need five or ten of those and you, you're doing very well. Okay, so um, another question. If I had five rent to rent properties with, say, five rooms in each, how many hours per week would it take to manage? Five, so that's 25 tenants. It, do you know what? That, that question is not easy to answer because it depends on the tenant group. And there's a lot of tenant groups, there's students, workers, professionals, you've got boutique, specialists, uh, there's just so many different tenant groups and they each take different amounts of time. So uh, it, it depends on the area and I wouldn't really, let me think how to answer this. See I use a property manager now and I know for a fact he isn't running around like a headless chicken all day every day and he's got a lot of tenants to manage so I don't think it's going to take that long but either way if you follow the system correctly you're going to outsource this to a property manager you're not going to do this yourself because that's that's not the point of it because it, the property managers are on a commission basis anyway so if you you know you pay them based on the amount of rooms that you have so I wouldn't really worry it, it depends how you're going to look at this if you're going to look at it as you just want a few houses and you want to run it yourself, then it might take you, let's say, five hours a week. 
Okay, I'm just throwing that figure out there. But for me, I would just have a property manager deal with that for me, pay them a, a small fee for that, and they're going to take care of it. So you don't even need to worry about it. Okay, cool. So that kind of answers all the questions. Right. So if there are any other questions, feel free you can come through to us via our mobile numbers, which we've given you previously. Or if you want to get booked onto the course, you could uh, go to a link at the top of the page. Hopefully you found a webinar of some use. Uh, sorry, just quickly go ahead. Uh, going through, just making sure that there are no other questions. Yep, so if you if you like the thoughts of any of that, you want to have a chat, you're more than welcome to give us a call after the webinar, we can have a chat. If not, we look forward to seeing you on the 16th and 17th of July in Birmingham. I've really uh, enjoyed presenting to you this evening, as I'm sure Neil has. Yeah, thank, thanks, Ash. Uh, yeah. yeah, nice to speak with you all. Okay. And I hope to see you soon. Okay, take care guys, have a lovely evening, uh, good night and God bless, bye bye.